The construction of the Rusky Bridge, spanning the eastern Bosphorus Strait to connect Rusky Island with the mainland city of Vladivostok, is a remarkable feat of modern engineering and one of Russia's most ambitious infrastructure projects. The bridge was completed in 2012 as part of a federal initiative aimed at transforming Vladivostok into a hub for international cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region. Standing as a symbol of innovation and resilience, the Rusky Bridge not only overcame extreme environmental challenges, but also set several world records with its cutting-edge design and engineering solutions. The Rusky Bridge project was initiated to promote Vladivostok's development as a center of international trade and collaboration in the Asia-Pacific. The bridge is integral to the Primorsky region's transportation network, providing a crucial link between the island areas and Vladivostok's mainland. Beyond facilitating daily transport, the bridge aimed to enhance Vladivostok's role as a major gateway for Russia's economic relations in the Asia-Pacific. With Rusky Island being the designated venue for the 2012 Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation (APEC) Summit, the project became especially significant in Russia's diplomatic and economic agenda, transforming Vladivostok into a modern, globally connected city. The Rusky Bridge is notable for its immense dimensions and innovative design, setting records as the world's longest cable-stayed bridge span at the time. The bridge spans 1,104 meters between pylons, with a central height of 70 meters above the water. Each pylon towers 320 meters above the ground, among the tallest in the world. The bridge deck is supported by stay cables, which are up to 580 meters in length and are secured by pylons spaced over a kilometer apart. In terms in terms of weight and strength, the bridge's stay cable system is unparalleled, using over 3,700 tons of high-strength materials to secure the structure against the strait's intense weather conditions. The bridge's location presented extreme environmental and engineering challenges that necessitated innovative solutions. Vladivostok's climate varies drastically, with temperatures dropping below minus 30 degrees Celsius in winter and rising above 37 degrees Celsius in summer. The winds over the eastern Bosphorus Strait can reach speeds of up to 36 meters per second, creating stormy conditions with wave heights up to 6 meters. The construction team also had to contend with ice thickness of up to 70 centimeters during the winter months, which posed risks to the stability and durability of the bridge's foundations. To address these challenges, the project incorporated special materials and design elements to withstand the harsh environment. Self-compacting, sulfate-resistant Portland cement was used in the construction of the pylons, piers, and grillage, ensuring durability and protection against corrosion. This type of concrete was chosen for its resistance to the corrosive effects of seawater and its ability to maintain structural integrity over time, even under extreme weather conditions. The bridge's location presented extreme environmental and engineering challenges that necessitated innovative solutions. Vladivostok's climate varies drastically, with temperatures dropping below minus 30 degrees Celsius in winter and rising above 37 degrees Celsius in summer. The winds over the eastern Bosphorus Strait can reach speeds of up to 36 meters per second, creating stormy conditions with wave heights up to 6 meters. The construction team also had to contend with ice thickness of up to 70 centimeters during the winter months, which posed risks to the stability and durability of the bridge's foundations. To address these challenges, the project incorporated special materials and design elements to withstand the harsh environment. Self-compacting, sulfate-resistant Portland cement was used in the construction of the pylons, piers, and grillage, ensuring durability and protection against corrosion. The construction of the Rusky Bridge required a sophisticated logistical setup, with two production facilities established on the Nazimov Peninsula and Rusky Island. These facilities included state-of-the-art concrete mixing plants, rebar welding workshops, and mechanical and equipment repair centers. Housing and office buildings were also built for the workforce, which included over 1,300 employees. To assemble the bridge's massive pylons, a specialized set of cranes and custom-made shutters were employed. Russian-made derrick cranes with a lifting capacity of up to 400 tons were used to handle large sections of the bridge deck, while a 1,350-ton crawler crane enabled rapid lifting of steel span sections on Rusky Island. The bridge pylon 
salons were built using custom-designed self-lifting shutters that allowed construction work to progress more quickly and safely at great heights. Constructing bridge supports in the turbulent waters of the eastern Bosphorus Strait was a unique challenge for the Rusky Bridge Project. Drilling and pile concreting operations were conducted from the sea, a first in Russian bridge construction. Water depths at various points ranged from 14 to 20 meters, requiring 120 drilled piles, each 2 meters in diameter, to form a stable footing for the pylons. On Rusky Island, a man-made peninsula was created to serve as a construction base, providing additional protection against ice waves and potential impacts from ships with up to 66,000 tons of displacement. Each pylon required a massive amount of construction materials, with over 20,000 cubic meters of concrete mix and 3,000 tons of steel used to build the grillage or support platform for each foundation. To monitor structural integrity, strain gauges were embedded within the grillage to provide real-time data on load and stress distribution, ensuring long-term stability and durability. A key feature of the Rusky Bridge is its advanced stay cable system, which secures the bridge deck to the pylons. Each stay cable is made up of multiple strands, individually coated for corrosion protection and enclosed in a high-density polyethylene jacket. The outer sheathing, designed with colors representing the Russian flag, also includes a helical groove to reduce vibrations caused by wind and rain. This compact design not only minimizes wind load but also reduces material costs by 35 to 40 percent in comparison to conventional cable stay designs. With a projected service life of over 100 years, the stay cable system reflects both functional and aesthetic considerations, contributing to the bridge's resilience and visual appeal. The erection of box girder segments, a popular method for constructing elevated bridges and viaducts, has been significantly advanced by VSL Indonesia. VSL, a globally recognized leader in post-tensioning and heavy lifting solutions, brings extensive expertise to Indonesia's infrastructure development through the design and erection of box girder segments. These segments are essential components of bridge construction, offering both strength and durability for spanning long distances, which is critical in projects such as highways, railways, and urban transit systems. Box girder segments are precast, post-tensioned concrete elements shaped like hollow rectangular boxes which allow for greater structural stability and reduced weight compared to solid beams. They are typically prefabricated off-site and then transported to the construction site for assembly. VSL Indonesia utilizes advanced techniques, including the balanced cantilever method and the span-by-span -span method for the erection of these segments. In the balanced cantilever method, segments are cast in situ or assembled by cranes and are supported temporarily by cantilevering them from the previous segment. In the span -by span method, segments are erected in sequence from one support to the next, providing efficient construction in areas with limited access. One of the key technologies that VSL Indonesia implements is post-tensioning, which involves the installation of high-tension cables within the girder to enhance load-carrying capacity and minimize deflection under load. This technique allows the girders to handle heavy dynamic loads while maintaining structural integrity over time. VSL Indonesia's post tensioning system is notable for its high precision and reliability, ensuring the longevity and resilience of the constructed bridge. The Rosbrick Bridge Relocation Project marked a significant undertaking in civil engineering and meticulous planning. Located in the Moselle region of northeastern France, the Rosbrick Bridge had served as a crucial crossing point for many years. However, as the bridge aged and required extensive repairs, authorities determined that a full replacement would be safer and more sustainable in the long term. The relocation of the existing bridge, which paved the way for its eventual dismantling, became a major event, with meticulous planning and coordination lasting several months. A time-lapse of the project reveals the complex and synchronized steps taken to move the bridge, an operation that was as visually impressive as it was technically demanding. The relocation took place over a tight 72-hour window, during which the SNCF railway line running beneath the bridge had to be fully closed. This required the temporary dismantling of both the train tracks and the overhead electrical lines to create the space and ensure safety during the operation. 
operation. Given the strategic importance of this railway line, coordinating a full closure required extensive planning, with all steps executed precisely to minimize disruption. Railway authorities, the construction teams, and local government bodies worked together to establish a plan that allowed the bridge relocation to proceed swiftly and efficiently. Moving a large bridge is no small feat. The engineering team employed specialized hydraulic equipment and high-capacity cranes to facilitate the bridge's relocation. Hydraulic jacks helped lift the structure from its original position, while rollers and cranes were used to slide it away from its prior location, preparing it for eventual dismantling. This required extreme precision, as even minor miscalculations could lead to damage to the bridge structure, machinery, or the railway infrastructure below. The bridge relocation also highlighted the importance of logistical coordination. Teams worked in shifts around the clock to maintain the tight schedule, with engineers and operators constantly communicating to address any challenges that arose. The entire operation exemplified modern engineering's reliance on teamwork, coordination, and cutting-edge technology. The Moselle Departmental Council which spearheaded the project, not only aimed to complete the relocation and dismantling efficiently, but also engaged the community by providing visual updates. The time-lapse shared with the public allowed residents and stakeholders to follow the process, fostering transparency and keeping everyone informed. The relocation of the Rossbrick Bridge is not only a remarkable technical achievement, but also a case study in how infrastructure projects can be managed in a way that minimizes impact on the community while showcasing showcasing the benefits of careful planning and advanced engineering. This project underscores the importance of modernizing infrastructure and serves as a model for future bridge relocations and replacements across the region and beyond. The Oldham Road Bridge demolition in Ashton-under-Lyne, carried out in 2014, was a significant civil engineering project that not only transformed the landscape, but also played a crucial role in upgrading the infrastructure of the Greater Manchester area. The bridge, which was a part of the busy A627 route, was in a state of disrepair and needed replacement due to structural issues that had accumulated over its years of service. This project required planning and coordination to minimize disruption to the thousands of daily commuters and local businesses that depended on this route. The Oldham Road Bridge had served as a key transport link in ashton under Line, connecting the town center to neighboring areas and supporting a large volume of traffic on the A627. The bridge was vital for both local transit and regional connectivity, linking Ashton with Oldham and providing access to Manchester and surrounding areas. Built during an earlier era of construction, the bridge eventually showed signs of aging, and inspection reports confirmed that its structure had deteriorated to a point where replacement was deemed necessary. Years of use had taken a toll on the bridge, with issues ranging from concrete degradation to metal fatigue, posing a safety hazard for both vehicles and pedestrians. Tameside Metropolitan Borough Council, in partnership with Transport for Greater Manchester, TFGM, determined that a full-scale demolition and replacement was required. The decision was not taken lightly, as the bridge's demolition would be disruptive to local traffic, with ashton under Line being one of the major hubs in the Greater Manchester area. However, safety concerns and the desire to upgrade the infrastructure for future growth led to the go-ahead for the project. The demolition of the Oldham Road Bridge was a complex engineering endeavor, requiring a high degree of planning and public consultation. A key challenge was minimizing the impact on the local community, given the heavy traffic flow in the area. The demolition also required rerouting traffic and ensuring public safety in the vicinity of the project. In the lead up to the demolition, extensive communication efforts were made to inform local residents, business owners, and commuters of the upcoming disruptions. Road diversions and alternative routes were planned and publicized in advance to allow motorists to make alternative arrangements. Additionally, a temporary pedestrian bridge was constructed to ensure that residents and pedestrians would still be able to cross the area safely. This commitment to minimizing inconvenience highlighted the Council's approach to keeping the community informed and involved throughout the process. The demolition itself took place over a weekend to reduce the disruption to weekday commuters. In April 2014, demolition crews moved in with heavy machinery, including cranes, excavators, and hydraulic breakers. 
the process was carefully timed and coordinated as the bridge was dismantled in stages to prevent any debris from spilling onto surrounding areas or causing damage to nearby structures. Given the residential and commercial nature of Ashton Underline, the demolition team took extensive precautions to limit dust and noise pollution. To begin, the team stripped the bridge of its railings, asphalt, and other superficial elements. Following this, the bridge deck was systematically broken apart. Cranes lifted larger concrete slabs away, while hydraulic breakers and other tools were used to demolish remaining sections. This careful, step-by-step -step approach allowed the team to maintain control over the process and ensure safety throughout. Once the primary structure was removed, workers continued by clearing the remaining debris, which was loaded onto trucks and taken to disposal facilities. As with any large-scale demolition project, the Oldham Road Bridge demolition faced several several challenges. The primary challenge was the need to balance efficiency with safety in a busy urban area. Additionally, environmental concerns played a significant role in the planning and execution of the project. Efforts were made to recycle as much of the demolition material as possible, reducing the environmental footprint of the project. Concrete from the bridge was crushed and reused for other construction projects, aligning with the region's commitment to sustainable practices. Noise and air pollution were also key considerations, particularly because the demolition site was close to residential neighborhoods. To mitigate these issues, the demolition was scheduled for nighttime hours and weekends. Dust control measures were also implemented, spraying water over the site to prevent dust particles from spreading. These precautions minimized the environmental impact and kept disruption to a minimum for local residents. After the demolition was completed, construction of a new, modern bridge began. The replacement structure was designed to meet current engineering standards and accommodate greater traffic volumes, improving safety and efficiency. The new bridge incorporated more durable materials and was built with a focus on long-term sustainability and low maintenance, ensuring it would serve the community for decades to come. The reconstruction of the Oldham Road Bridge was a key element of the Greater Manchester Transport Network's modernization efforts. By investing in such infrastructure projects, local authorities aimed to enhance connectivity, reduce congestion, and support regional economic growth. Improved infrastructure like the new bridge made Ashton Underline more accessible, benefiting local businesses and facilitating smoother travel for both residents and visitors.